Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Ahmed Hijazi from EC Cat Solutions. Uh, today, inshallah, we will uh, make a tutorial video to create uh, the 3D model for uh, this pressure vessel. It's a horizontal pressure vessel uh, with inside diameter 1 meter 0.981 with thickness 10 millimeters for the shell plates. And here we have the uh, dash head information it's two uh, to one ellipsoidal head with a thickness 10 millimeters and minimum after forming eight millimeters here that's the straight flange value okay uh, let's start uh, proceeding uh, creating this uh, project and step by step we will know how to uh, generate the 3d model and make uh, all parts uh, to make it make sense okay from here uh, let's click on a new button and from here let's uh, select a name for uh, this project and from here that will be the project name okay and let let's create it on the uh, desktop so from here let's click on okay and let's keep uh, overall uh, module uh, as uh, as you can see, uh, there are different modules here for heat exchangers, storage tanks, spherical tanks, and uh, ducts. So let's keep the overall uh, module and click on finish. By clicking on finish, the project will be created on uh, the desktop. Here we have uh, this project and here's the project information. From here, we uh, could define the uh, job number of, of this project. So let's come back here, define the job number. You can define the other uh, fields here for the project name, plant name, client and owner. Now let's click on save. And let's come uh, here uh, on the vessel node. And let's give a name for this vessel. So that's the vessel name. So from here, let's right click on the vessel and rename the vessel and click on OK. Now from the uh, vessel setting let's open the uh, equipment setting from here you can define the service of this vessel the serial number so from here let's take the uh, vessel uh, vessel name train connection collection vessel and the serial number and from here if you take a look you can uh, change the position of the vessel from horizontal tilted and vertical vessel in our case it's a horizontal vessel but if we take a look on, on the uh, drawing in deep, you can figure that the reference line uh, laid on the right hand side. So in this case, we need to define the location of the nozzles from the right hand side. So here in SEG, we will uh, change the direction of the assembly to make it start from right to left. Okay, so, so here we will make it horizontal visible and change the position or the di direction of the assembly from right to left. And let's click on save. Uh, now let's create the first item, which is uh, this ellipsoidal head. Okay, this ellipsoidal head uh, was inside diameter 1 meter 0.981. So from here, let's select head and name it as a right head. Click enter. Now here, you will find a list of uh, different type of uh, heads, available heads in SCG, more than 17 types. The first type is the ellipsoidal head as a half of ellipse. If you take a look to the image on the right hand side, it's a half of ellipse. No crown radius or knuckle radius exists. But if we select the second type here, which is a head with crown and knuckle radius, ellipsoidal head with crown and knuckle radius, Easily, it's uh, related uh, to the uh, ASME code. So you can figure that the crown radius equals 0.9 and uh, from the inside diameter, and the knuckle radius equals 0.17 from the inside diameter. Okay, so from here, let's define the inside diameter of uh, the vessel, which is 1 meter 981, and the thickness is 10 millimeters. The straight flange is 50 millimeters. Minimum after forming is eight millimeters and here the material of uh, this head it's uh, SA 
516 grade 70 nace and hic so uh, we get it from uh, here from this drawing if we take a look to the material specification material specification you can figure that the shell and head material it will be nace and hic so from here let's change the material of of this part and click on save now if we click on start assembly to uh, generate this uh, item or this part on uh, Autodesk Inventor, you can figure that easily. The, uh, uh, let's uh, wait a second. The direction of the head is not suit the same direction of uh, the head in the drawing. The uh, <coughs> the uh, uh, convex direction. Is flipped so we need to flip the direction of the head from here by clicking on the, this button to flip the direction of the head now let's add the second element which is cam1 okay here we have uh, the first can if so if we take a look to the, the first can here it's one uh, meter point uh, nine nine uh, eight eight zero so from here let's select cam1 and select the suitable type in this case we have single welding line so let's select fill uh, type and defined uh, sorry define the inside diameter of the shell the uh, thickness and longitudinal welding line orientation and uh, the length uh, as bear uh, this drawing which is uh, 1880 180 the welding gap let's make it one millimeter define the material and click on save let's add another can so from here let's add can two <clears throat> and let's make it looks like can one but we will change the longitudinal welding line orientation and the length of this part so from here, from here let's change the longitudinal welding line orientation and the length of this part to suit the uh, drawing requirements here that the length of the second part and regarding the orientation that's the orientation or the longitudinal welding line orientation okay let's add the third can so from here let's add can three and let's make it looks like can one it's actually the same uh, information for can one the same length the same longitudinal welding line orientation and thickness now let's add the last the main bar to which is an ellipsoidal head which is left head and let's make it looks like the right head the same dimensions of the right head and click on accept but as mentioned on the uh, first head it's the convex direction uh, is not uh, we flipped it but in this case we, we will we will not need to flip it so let's remove this checkbox and click save now let's create the 3D model for all of the bezel. So here, that's the first uh, head. As you can see, the assembly starts from the right side to the uh, left-hand side. The third can. After that, the last can. Okay, now we have the uh, main parts of this fizzle. Now we will proceed uh, with creating the uh, attachments like saddles, lifting lugs, nozzles, all of that called ch uh, childs or attachments to the main elements. Now let's uh, come back to the drawing. Here we have uh, two support saddles with stiffening rings. Okay, and if we check the uh, saddle drawing here okay so let's take the dimensions from the saddle so let's come back to SEG and select the first can okay and from elements when you select a main part you will find here on the element list the available attachments that you can add it from SEG library for example here for the supports group you can add saddle Tilted saddle for the tilted vessels, tagged saddles, legs, lugs, skirt, anchor chair, different type of cradle. For the nozzles, you can add a nozzle with external projection 
nozzle with external and internal projection, PPI nozzles, couplings, clean out doors, weld outlets, stud outlet, coupling, or the lifting devices or lifting lugs. You will find different types of lifting lugs and the trunnions or the external attachments. You will find a huge list of uh, elements to add inside or outside. Okay, so let's select the cam and from here let's add a support saddle. So the first saddle will be the fixed saddle. Okay, and from here let's select the uh, suitable type for the saddle. You, you will find here uh, 12 types of saddle. In our case, here if we uh, take a look to the uh, saddle uh, uh, drawing here, you can figure that the whip position on the right hand side so from here we will select uh, the saddle and the whip uh, case will be to the right now let's define the uh, saddle uh, contact angle it's uh, 120 the height it's 1350 the whip thickness is 13 millimeters and we have a wear plate the wear plate contact angle and the width of the wear plate, the thickness of the wear plate, the fillet, the material of the wear plate, and the base plate uh, length, the base plate width, and the thickness, the hole diameter, 30 millimeters. The hole offset from uh, the uh, short edge is 243.6, and from the long edge, 1. To seven. So let's take a look to the uh, drawing here. The hole on the middle of this distance. So we will divide this distance by two. So the offset for of this hole from the long edge. That's the long edge. It's a half value of, of that one. And the offset from the long edge, uh, the short edge. Sorry, that value. Those are the values here. Okay. Now let's uh, add the number of holes. We have four holes and the base plate material here here the location of uh, the location of this saddle and the orientation is so here it's easy give you the ability to uh, control the orientation of the saddle if you have hanging vessel and the saddle at the top or uh, hanging vessel and the saddle on the wall so you can change the orientation of the vessel by changing this value here, uh, the wear plate offset is 26, and from here, so we haven't a cut on the whip, and uh, the offset of, uh, if you take a look to the parameter here, which is a base plate offset from the back of the whip, so it's 13 millimeters based on this drawing. If we take a look here, we have 13 millimeters here, and uh, between that and that one we have 26 millimeters from the whip and the wear plate, which is that value 26. Okay, now let's uh, define the uh, 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 top uh, rib width, which is uh, in our case, if we take a look here, it's uh, two, uh, sorry, two to eight. So here, two to eight, and at the bottom, 200. The thickness is 13 millimeters and the chamfer, let's keep it 20 millimeters. We have uh, an intermediate uh, rips. Okay, we have an intermediate rips. If, if we take a look to the image here, we have an intermediate rips and a, a mid trip. So we need to activate the mid rip and one of the intermediate rips. So from here, let's activate the mid rip and uh, and intermediate trips here and define the uh, spacing between them okay so that's the spacing uh, between saddles so let's click on save and start the assembly uh, here you can figure that uh, it's easy creating the 3d model of the saddle on behind so if you would like to make a preview for uh, the elements during creation and make a rendering uh, for the elements during creation there is an option we will activate it after creating the uh, first saddle okay here 
Okay, this option, we can activate it, but we should still, uh, this button become blue again to, to finish the assembly. Okay, so from here, let's open the app setting, and from here, let's select child preview and parent preview. Let's take a look to the model. Now the saddle is created. Okay, so we have the 3D model of, of this saddle. Okay, now we can save the setting. When we click on save and come back to SEG to create the second saddle. So from here, let's add uh, another saddle on, the, on CAN 3. We could add it on CAN 1 uh, and define the uh, elevation of, of it from the start of CAN 1. But let's add it on, on, on CAN 3. So it's a sliding saddle. Okay, and click on save. So for the uh, sliding saddle, if we select it, and there's a slide saddle, sliding saddle, you can figure that the web on the left side. So let's select the left side web and it finds the dimensions of uh, this saddle. You define the rear plate, sorry, uh, the contact angle your plate width, the thickness, the fillet weld, and the material of, of uh, the weir plate. Define the base plate length, base plate width, thickness and hole diameter, the uh, offset from the uh, short uh, hole, and the uh, offset from the uh, long side. Here we have a slot hole, so Let's define the slot length. So let's select this checkbox, so which is sliding support. Define the slot length. Define the number of holes as one hole. I will let you know why I make it one hole. And the on the first saddle, we make it four holes. I will show you the difference uh, between the dimensions. Okay. Here, uh, let's uh, define the location of this saddle. So this saddle reference is the third welding line here. So the reference here, that welding line, so the location of the saddle will be laid from this welding line because it's now located, it's located now on uh, CAN3, so the reference line will be measured from here. So that's the value from the welding line and define the other dimensions, 13 uh, and outer rib. So the uh, width of, uh, of the web, will be like that. The thickness will be 13. And we have a mid rib. We have an intermediate ribs, 8, 6, 2.2. And now let's click on save. Now let's start creating the 3D model for the second saddle. And here you will uh, figure out the difference before selecting the option of parent preview and child preview. Here you can figure that the uh, saddle child created and uh, Autodesk Inventor make a rendering for it during creation. In the first case, everything created on behind and assembled to the final model uh, in one time. But here you can figure element by element during creation. Here that's the outer ribs, the mid rib. And uh, after that, the intermediate ribs. Here's the intermediate ribs. At last, we will we will get the uh, weir plate. Okay, here we have uh, all elements of, of the saddle. Uh, and the next step, I will show you the difference between the option of four holes that we created here and the option of one hole here on this saddle. Okay, let's open this saddle and create a quick drawing to check some dimensions. So from here, let's open a quick drawing and let's uh, Add a view 
here. Make it one. Okay, and let's take a section to figure out the uh, holes uh, locations. If we make a center line here, there, and measure the distances between here and there, it's the same distance which defined it here on the saddle, which uh, 243.5. Let's come back here. 243.5 or 0.6. Sorry. Okay, we could change it to 0.5, no problem. Okay, but uh, here, if you measure the distance between the holes, you can figure that they are equal. Here, SEG create them with equal spacing. Okay, but in actual, uh, on the original drawings, the spacing is not equal. Here, if you take a look with that value, Okay, and the double of, of that value, so if we uh, multiply or uh, uh, make a submission for uh, those, you can figure that that value is not equal to that value. So how we can make uh, that uh, 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 by using the Autodesk Inventor options? Here, if we... Come back to the 3D model for the second saddle. Let's open this saddle. Okay. And open the base plate here. By that, we can make a pattern for this slot hole. Sorry. Let's select this slot hole and make a pattern with that distance. Okay. Which is uh, 440.8. Okay. 440.8. Reverse the other direction, and you can make a mirror for that <clears throat> on the mid plane. And let's click save. When we open the drawing here, let's move this little bit outside the drawing here, and let's add <clears throat> the second saddle detail. And let's take another section here that's for the sliding saddle. And let's add those center lines here and there. Okay, and let's measure the distance. Here, that's the distance from the edge. And that's the spacing here. And you can figure that the spacing now become not equal. So if you would like to make them with equal spacing, you can directly select the option of equal number of spacing here by adding the number of holes here, which is four holes on the fixed saddle. But if you would like to make them with uh, unequal spacing, you can do it by uh, making a pattern from Autodesk Inventor. Now let's add another uh, stiffening rings to those saddles. So from here, let's select the can one. And from here, let's uh, open the external attachments and select external stiffening. And let's add stiffening ring one. Here, that's the first stiffening ring. Okay, let's come down here and select built up section and define the height of this section, the thickness. So we have a detail here for, uh, for that one. So if we take a look here, that's the height of that whip and that's the top plate width and thickness here. Okay, so let's come back to a CG and complete defining the uh, data. And the location will be the same saddle location. And we have a top plate, the top plate width, top plate uh, thickness, and here the longitudinal building line <coughs> orientation and the gap. Here's the material and the click on accept. Let's add another uh, stiffening ring on the uh, other can. So, uh, sorry, sorry, let's add a stiffening ring. So, stiffening ring two. And let's make it looks like stiffening ring one. So, if you select it like that and click save, if you move to another point, 
and come back to the stifling ring you will find the same information here just we will change the location to make it looks like the uh, second setup and click on save now you click on start <clears throat> we will start generating the stiffening ring here the first part of which is the whip after that the top ring okay the second stiffening ring Okay, now we have two stiffening rings uh, over the saddles and you can figure that there is an intersect between the stiffening ring and saddle and uh, on the end of this video we will make uh, the modification to make the stiffening ring suits uh, the uh, cut on the saddle. Okay, so uh, keep watching this video to learn how to make a cut on the stiffening ring to suit the saddle uh, configuration. Now let's add uh, uh, an earthing lug or a ground lug and add it to the uh, support saddles. So from here, uh, you can, uh, as, as discussed, uh, you can add uh, attachments to the main elements only. It's not uh, an option to add uh, a child to another child. So how we can add uh, a grounding lug to a saddle. So if you select the saddle, uh, the shell from here, and from the external attachment, you can find uh, an option here to add a grounding lug to the shell. So let's add it to the shell. Ground lug one. We have a grounding lug here. So this rounding lug, you, you will select the uh, suitable configuration for this one. So from here, let's uh, define the width, which is dimension A, which is uh, 65, and the height is 125. The thickness is uh, 6 millimeters. The, uh, it's without a chamfer. And uh, the location, any location and any orientation right now, the whole diameter is 15 millimeters and the offset uh, is, is uh, 25 millimeters. Now let's create this grounding lug. Okay. Here we have this uh, grounding lug on, uh, on the shell. Now it's assembled on the shell. Now we need to move it to the saddle. Okay, so we will learn how to uh, remove the constraints from here and move it to the uh, saddle. One more uh, point here, if, you, if we take a look to the uh, to uh, the uh, this detailed drawing for the uh, grounding lug here, sorry, for this grounding lug, you can figure that we have a fillet here. And the option in, in SEG is a chamfer, not a fillet. So how we can make a fillet here on this grounding lug? If, if we open it, let's open the uh, this part here. By uh, selecting the uh, fillet option, you can make a fillet here and define the fillet value. So if we make it 25, for example, so you have a fillet here on this grounding lug. So now the second step to move this grounding lug to the saddle. So from here, let's select the grounding lug and you can figure that you have three default constraints with the uh, planes here. If you take a look here, you have a constraints here and those are, so we will delete them to make this uh, grounding lug free. Now we can make a constraint for this grounding lug. So let's make this surface mate to this surface and to check the dimensions let's open the location of this one so from uh, the mid plane and here the location it's uh, from the facing uh, to the center one five two so if we 
come back here. We have a plane at uh, the middle. So let's select the mid plane here. So from here, the mid plane to here, 0.56 millimeters. Okay, and click on accept. And from here to there, let's define it to be like that. Now we have this grounding lug on the saddle and it's still defined it on SEG. So if you open the bill of material, you will find this grounding lug defined it here uh, with the material and uh, all dimensions of, of this uh, part. Okay, now let's add uh, a lifting lugs uh, to this uh, model. So if we uh, open the 3D model, you will find uh, lifting lugs here and there and on the uh, side view. Those are with on angle uh, 35 degrees. So from here, let's select Canon. And from elements, let's select uh, a lifting lug. So you can figure that you have a different types, but for uh, the required type, it's lug two. So from here, let's add lug one. And from lug one, let's uh, define the dimensions of, of this lifting lug. The uh, offset, which is dimension D, it's 100 millimeter, and the offset E is the half of uh, the width. The thickness is 20 millimeters, 10, 10, and the radius is 75. The whole diameter is 50 millimeters. Uh, and from here, let's add a wear plate. So dimension A will be 200 millimeters. The width is 420. The thickness 10 millimeters. The uh, width will be uh, the fillet will be 25, and the material will be a normalized material. And the, uh, the location for uh, uh, the first lifting lug will be at that uh, position, and the orientation will be on 35 degrees. Now let's click on save and create this lifting lug. We check the location of this one, the orientation, all of that. Here, as mentioned. A preview for element during creation takes place here. That's the lifting lug assembly. Okay, let's add another lifting lug on the other side. So let's add lug two. Lug two. It it looks like lug one, but on another orientation. So the only thing we will change is the orientation. So the orientation will be three to five and click on save. Let's add another two lifting lugs, which is lug three. Lug three, it looks like lug one, but with a different location. So the location of this one will be five, zero, four, six. Click save, another lifting lug, lug it looks like lug 3 but with a different orientation on the same location but with different orientation change the orientation of this one and let's click start the assembly The third lifting lug and the last lifting lug, which is lug number four. Okay, here we have the uh, assembly for the vessel with saddles, uh, stiffening rings, and uh, lifting lugs. Now let's proceed with creating the nozzles as per this drawing. So 
let's start from the first can we have two nozzles on the first can we have manhole and another nozzle which is in the three so let's uh, create the first nozzle which is manhole let's select the can one because this nozzle is located on can one okay so let's select can one and from elements let's add a nozzle and this nozzle with external projection only no internal projection if we take a look to the image here or to the drawing here no internal projection for this nozzle but here for those nozzles for example we have an internal projection so during sel select selection we will select shell nozzle for the uh, with external projection for this one so here it's the manhole and for from here uh, this uh, manhole size is to 24 inches but it's from blade not from pipe we have a welding line here on the neck of, uh, of this nozzle so to select the suitable type here you will find more than 25 different types of nozzles so uh, the suitable type for this case here it's a nozzle from a uh, blade connected to shell so let's define the outside diameter of the nozzle which is 24 inches so from here the thickness 10 millimeters the longitudinal building line orientation the weld gap and the location of uh, this nozzle the orientation at zero degree and the uh, blade material of the neck it will be the same shell and head material so let's define it to be like that let's add a, a reinforced bed <clears throat> with uh, 100 millimeters width and thickness here the material is normalized and man pool that's the uh, the description of, 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 the, of the service of this nozzle let's click on save <clears throat> to define uh, the projection let's add uh, the flange first after that we will define the projection to the facing of the flange so it's manhole face uh, flange <clears throat> sorry from here let's select the flange and from the list here let's select the suitable flange those are standard flanges and in our case we have a Wildenic wrist face uh, flange according to SME B16.5 with 150 uh, rating the size is 24 and the thickness is standard uh, not a standard thickness it's 10 millimeters that's uh, the end thickness of the flange which equals the thickness of the neck now let's select the material of uh, the flange okay and <clears throat> paste it here and click on save now if we come back to the manhole again and open the calculator uh, for and define the projection of the manhole if we take a look to this view you can figure that the projection of the manhole here it's 1500 to the facing of the flange so let's come back to this view again and define the projection 1500 and click calculate so that's the uh, projection of the pipe the projection of the pipe calculate here on this form when you click save it will be reflected here to this uh, text box. so if you click save you will find this value reflected here now one more thing we will do which is the weld setting from here if you open the weld setting of this nozzle you have the ability to define uh, the weld style if it's a single v or double v and uh, without clad or with a clad to the parent or clad to the parent and the child in our case it's a single v and no clad let's define the fillet weld here and there it's eight millimeters on both sides and click on save now if you open the nozzle table from the tables if you open the nozzle table you can figure that you have nozzle uh, uh, edge the surface of this nozzle is a manhole the outside diameter thickness and flange class flange uh, type and flange facing here is the projection uh, from the visual center line and the bad thickness the bad width and the weld style and the values of the fillet width uh, now uh, let's add a manhole uh, and a gasket to this one because this manhole uh, has uh, a gasket and cover so let's select the external connection here and from elements let's add a gasket so mh 
gasket and define the gasket type select the suitable type which is uh, according to ASME select the same rating the size 24 and click on save now let's add a cover so from external connection let's add a blind so MH cover and from here let's select the cover node and select the required type which is rest face blind flange select the size and define the material which is the same material for the forged so let's click on save uh, um, sorry click on paste and from here let's click on flip to flip the direction of the facing of this blind to be uh, on the direction of the gasket and click on save now if you click start you will get the uh, nozzle here that's the nozzle neck with a welding line here as you can figure you have a welding line here on the nozzle that's the welding line and the uh, flange after that the gasket okay now we have we have uh, the blind flange connected to the nozzle let's proceed with the second uh, nozzle which is uh, the bottom nozzle here which is nozzle M. So you will add the other attachments like the David, the hand grip, uh, all of that uh, at the end, inshallah. Here we have nozzle N3. If we come back to the nozzle table here, to check nozzle N3, nozzle N3 is 4 inches with a rating 300 and schedule 120. So let's add nozzle N3. So from elements, let's add N3. Click save. Now from here it's a nozzle from pipe, so let's define the size four inches, schedule 120, and the location uh, for uh, for this uh, nozzle is 450. The orientation on 190 degrees, and the pipe material. So let's select the pipe material from here, and click based, and the service drain. Okay, we have uh, a reinforced bed with uh, 58 millimeters width and with a normalized material and let's click on save we will change the projection from the calculator after adding the flange so from the external connection let's add n3 flange and from here let's select weld neck rest face select the rating it's 300 and it's four inches schedule 120 and the material, the forged, forged material here with NACE and HIC. So to find it like that and click on save. Now, when we come back again to nozzle industry and open the calculator, you can define the projection of this nozzle. If we take a look here, the projection will be 1,250. So let's define the projection here, 1,250 and click on calculate calculate the projection here that's the value of the projection if you click save it will be reflected here now let's open the set weld define the weld size and click on start the simply to create the uh, next nozzle which is nozzle in C that's the nozzle uh, neck and here the nozzle uh, reward after that the uh, flange for this nozzle okay now let's add another nozzle but uh, in that uh, time we will add the nozzles on the second can those nozzles which is n79251 and those helicide nozzles which is n8a and n8b so let's start with n7 if we come back to the drawing here, if we that one N7 here, that one okay, 
So N7, it's a, a long walled neck uh, nozzle with a, a two inches nozzle with a rating 150. Okay, so let's open here and select the CAN2. So you should select the CAN2 and from elements, let's add a nozzle, which is nozzle N7 and click add. And from here, let's select the suitable type, which is long walled neck connected to shell. And from here, select the rating size and the uh, location of this nozzle, 170, the orientation, it's the same. And here, that's the material for the forged. You find the material here. And uh, let's, let's keep this value as it is. Here for the calculator, let's calculate the projection, 1,500, click calculate. So that's the external projection. The value will be reflected here. After that, uh, uh, we will take this value uh, as a copy, and because we will use it for the uh, for the uh, this nozzle rib, because we have a rib for this nozzle, we have stiffening ribs for this nozzle. If we take a look uh, on this detail for this nozzle, nozzle N seven, uh, here we have two ribs, two perpendicular ribs here. So we will need this value for uh, the nozzle location. So from here, let's open the uh, assembly and from external elements let's add a nozzle support rib so n7 ribs and from here let's select the first type of nozzle ribs define the outside uh, diameter of the pipe you can measure uh, it from the drawing if you create it uh, it's uh, for the uh, two inches long gold neck nozzle it's uh, 78 uh, and uh, for the uh, rib width is 40 millimeter, the rib thickness and the rib angle, the location uh, of, of this nozzle, the same location of uh, the nozzle, the orientation at zero degree, the material is normalized. The offset, if you take a look to this drawing, the offset from the facing of, of the nozzle is uh, 70 millimeters. So let's define this as 70 millimeter and here that's the projection of the pipe which is the value uh, that we uh, copy it uh, from uh, the previous four okay and let's add another stiffening grip if you take a look to the image on the uh, uh, right hand side here that's the uh, the rib okay and here rib number four and rib number three we need to make a rib on that side so we need to make a rib on that side. So we will select rib number four and define the uh, angle. Let's make it 20 millimeters. And from here, let's uh, define the offset to be 70 millimeters. Define the material and let's click on save. Now let's click start simply. To create the uh, uh, nozzle in seven. That's the first stiffening grip. The second stiffening grip. Okay, so you can figure that you have two stiffening grips here. As you can see, the uh, longitudinal welding line orientation is near to the uh, this stiffening grip. And if we take a look to the uh, drawing here, you can figure that it's uh, 20 millimeters for the lateral one, but for the second one it is not mentioned. Okay, uh, on the longitudinal direction is not mentioned here on this uh, view, and already we have one view, uh, one view only, so it's not mentioned on the second view. So we can change it. So uh, we can increase uh, the uh, this angle only for that trip only, because you can control uh, each angle for each trip. So for, for here we will increase the uh, angle for uh, the third trip, uh, fourth. Uh, second rib and click save now if you click start as simply we will change the uh, angle of the that rib so you can figure that we have a clearance here between the welding line and this rib so here you have 20 degrees for this one but for that one we have 30 degrees okay if we come back to the drawing here we have a gasket and uh, blind flange here so let's add a gasket for n7 so from here let's add n7 gasket 
defined the type of this gasket keep the rating and click on save and apply the flange so n7 cover and this cover will be as maybe 16.5 with a rest face two inches and make it flip and from here let's take the material of the forged is it here and click on save now let's add another uh, nozzle which is a, a nozzle n9 if we come back to the drawing we have nozzle n9 it's a weld neck uh, nozzle uh, and let's check uh, the uh, dimensions of, the, of this nozzle here it's uh, three inches uh, 150 uh, uh, rating and this can be 160 okay so let's keep this nozzle so from here let's add in mine okay in mine it's uh, a nozzle from pipe the nickel created from pipe so the size is three inches schedule 160 let's take a quick look yes 160 we have uh, a reinforced uh, bed and the width of this Enforcing bed bed is 55. The material is normalized material, and uh, the location uh, of this one uh, from the shell is 566. And for the material, it's a pipe material. Okay, so let's define it here. And let's click on save. Let's add a flange to calculate the projection. So in mine flange. Okay, that's it. Select the rating, size, and schedule, and define the material of the forged here, and click on flipped. Sorry, it's uh, the flange, sorry. So it's for N9, and click on save. Now when we come back to N9, to calculate the projection, 1500, calculate, Click save. Now the weld style. Eight. Now let's create this nozzle. That's the gasket for nozzle N7. Okay, if we come back here, okay, we, we make a mistake here uh, because this nozzle was an with internal projection, okay, not with external projection only. So if we take a section here, let's take half section, you can figure that this nozzle without internal projection. Okay, so let's keep uh, keep it like that and change the second uh, the uh, the next nozzle which is uh, N two. Okay, here, we take a look here, N2 with internal projection. Uh, let's create it with internal projection and let's show you how you can create a nozzle with internal projection and how you can add the attachments. So let's select N2 and from here, instead of that type, we will select that type, which is nozzle with internal projection and external projection. So from here, let's add the next nozzle, which is N2. Okay, and N2, uh, the same properties, is three inches. 160 and uh, for uh, the location of this one the orientation it's the same and for the material of the vibe that's uh, the material of the vibe the wheel plate it's 55 normalized material for the rebat and here the surface let's click on save and for external let's add a flange so into flange Define this flange, we will make it looks like N9. So from here, select it directly. And if we come back to nozzle N2, when you open the calculator, let's define the projection, click on calculate, click save, define the weld. 
here you can figure that you have three values for the fillet <coughs> at the inside, fillet between the rebad and the shell, and the fillet between rebad and nozzle. And the uh, C, which is between uh, the nozzle and shell from inside. Click save. <coughs> now let's create, start the assembly. To create the uh, 3D model of this nozzle, which is nozzle with internal uh, and external projection. Okay, now let's uh, add some connections to uh, this nozzle from the inside. We have uh, two weld neck flanges with a deep pipe. So from here, let's select, uh, you can figure that this nozzle include internal and external nodes. So from internal, you can add some attachments. So from here, uh, let's first change the internal projection of this nozzle. And from internals, let's select the uh, elements and from here let's select flange n to f1 and uh, during uh, the selection of n2 we can uh, change the type of this nozzle select uh, the rating and uh, the size of this nozzle schedule and define the material as forged material and I click on save now let's add a gasket so from here n2 Gasket. Okay, select from here, find the material and click on save. Now let's define the uh, add applying the flange. Uh, sorry, add another flange. We have another connected flange. So N2, F2, and let's make it looks like uh, N2, F1 because it's on the same level. So if you click add, you will get it here, but we will make it uh, flipped to flip the direction of this flange. After that, we will add another pipe after uh, this one. So in two pipe. From here, let's select the pipe, select size and schedule. And uh, the length of, uh, of this uh, uh, pipe, we can uh, uh, add it as uh, like that and change the bio material. Sorry, from here and click on. Sorry, that's the bio material. The lens and here's the bio material and click on save. Now, if you click on assembly, you will get the connected uh, flanges. The internal projection will be modified. That's the first step. After that, you will add a flange to the end of the nozzle. I think uh, I select four inches instead of three inches. So may I need to change the size? Because this nozzle is three inches and but the flange is, is four inches. So if we check that, we come back here, so let's change the value to 3. The same for the gasket, yeah, it's for the second flange it's 3 inches. Click on save, and for the pipe it's 3 inches. Now let's click start to update the flange, flange's size. Okay, so by that way you can uh, modify or create a nozzle with internal projection and add uh, connection uh, uh, connected elements to the internal connection of, of this uh, nozzle. By the same way, we could make nozzle in 9. Okay, so let's go uh, to the next nozzle, which is in uh, 5. So from here, let's select CAN2 and from elements, let's add in 5. It's uh, six inches. Okay, with a schedule 80. Sorry, 80. And uh, the location of uh, this nozzle 1466. The orientation is at zero degree. 
<coughs> three bed is 85 width the material is normalized and the pipe material here the pipe material let's click on save let's add a flange here in five flange okay so let's select the type so the uh, rating for this one is 300 and the size is 6 inches schedule 80 and the material will be 350 lf2 class 1 and let's click save let's add another nozzle okay let's modify the projection before before going to the next step so the projection 1500 click save and the build style let's define it to be like that let's add another nozzle which is n1 so here we have nozzle n1 so let's come back to scg and from here let's add n1 and select this node it's a nozzle from pipe uh, with four inches schedule uh, four inches size 120 schedule the location of this one 70 and with a rebad <clears throat> 60 millimeters as a normalized material and for the pipe material it will be like that let's click on save and let's add n1 flange so n1 flange define the type of the flange find the rating the uh, size and the schedule to find the material okay and you click on save now we have uh, those two nozzles uh, we will remove the setting of preview for the child and the parent and you click on save okay and make assembly directly on the final assembly So that's nozzle in five, the flange. After that, nozzle in one with a flange, but we forget to define the projection for this one. So let's come back to N1 and open the calculator and define the projection and the world style. Or weld, uh, size now let's add nozzle other uh, two other nozzles uh, nozzle in a uh, 8a and b those are helicide nozzles okay and for uh, the detail of, of those nozzles here we have those nozzles okay so let's start with n18 so here let's select elements and n1 uh, n8a sorry in 8a click add okay it's a uh, four inches nozzle with a schedule 120 the location of uh, uh, sorry it's two inches sorry a weld neck nozzle with two inches so let's select long weld neck connected to shell with a rating 300 and the size is two inches uh, the location uh, of this nozzle is 170 the orientation will be on 90 degree and the material of of this one will be a forged material okay and the projection we will calculate it but it's not a radial nozzle it's a helicide nozzle so let's select this checkbox and automatically you can figure that you will get two values here here that's the first value which is offset and the offset direction so from here let's define the offset the offset of this nozzle is 600 millimeters okay so from here let's select uh, 600 and the offset direction on the counterclockwise because we defined the uh, orientation of this nozzle on 90 degree okay so the offset will be on the uh, clock uh, counterclockwise so let's select it from here like that and click on save now from the calculator let's calculate the projection so if we Come back here to this view it's 1200 the projection of this nozzle 
so it's 100 1200 click calculate now that's the projection of the uh, long weldenic nozzle okay so it's reflected directly here now let's define the fillet weld and click save now let's add the support for uh, this nozzle so from here let's select a nozzle support it's n 8 a rips click on save and from here let's uh, select uh, the first type define the outside diameter of uh, of the, the forged hub it's the same for uh, for the long weld neck here because they are uh, two inches as 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 we discussed, you can measure it here, or directly if you have the value, you can add it here. The rib width and the uh, rib thickness is 10 millimeters. The rib angle, let's make it 30. And the location, the same location of the nozzle, the orientation is 90 degree, and the material is a normalized material. The rib offset is 70 millimeters as per this drone, the offset. Okay. So we define this offset and the projection should be the projection of the nozzle. So let's save it and come back to the nozzle. Take a copy from the projection here. Take a copy and come back to the rib to paste this value. Okay, and it's not a heli radial, it's a heli side. So we will define this value with the same information of the nozzle. It's a counterclockwise. And we have another uh, rib here with 30 degrees and 70 millimeters offset and now let's click on save now let's start with the assembly we will need to uh, remove this uh, section make a complete cut at the beginning we will need to create uh, the first nozzle which is in eight after that the uh, thickening grips Okay, so that's the first strip. Okay, so from here, if you uh, if we could, if we if you take a look uh, to the image here, uh, to the drawing here, to this view, we have a rib on that side and another rib to that side. Okay, if we open, uh, you, you can figure that we we get one only. Maybe the sketch. The dimensions is, uh, is not correct so let's open this one so the assembly is including uh, two stiffening ribs okay we have that's uh, the uh, first uh, stiffening rib okay so if we uh, go inside and check the sketch okay we have an error inside the sketch so let's make a quick modification okay to uh, here so from here let's make the rib angle with that value and the other rib will be on the other side, not that one, because as per this drawing, the, the rib on that side, not that side. So let's activate rib three and click on save. Now let's click run the assembly. Here the first rib appears, so the sketch needs some modification. So now uh, I think we can change the value. It's with 10 inches. Uh, uh, degree so we can change that value now to 30 degrees okay and let's add another nozzle which is in 8b in 8b and from here we will make it looks like uh, in 8a okay but it's uh, on another uh, orientation it's on it's a counterclockwise not uh, it's a clockwise not counterclockwise so uh, let's refresh uh, refresh the node by moving to another node and come back here the only thing we will do which is uh, make it clockwise okay and click on save now when you click on start simply the first thing this rib uh, contact angle will be changed after that, the second nozzle, which is in uh, 8B, uh, will be created. Now let's add another uh, rib for in 8B. So from here, let's select CAN2. Okay, and from here, let's select stiffening rib in 8B ribs. OK, 
okay and from here let's make it looks like n8 rips and let's make a refresh for the node and come back again to load this node uh, information and from here let's select the other side because as you can figure the rib the main rib will be on that side the main rib will be on that side not uh, not at below here it's at the top so let's select other side and uh, from here we will keep uh, rib 3 as it is and we will make this angle as 10 degrees and create the 3d model for the ribs okay let's change this one to 30 degrees click start sorry uh, we need to change it to make it uh, on a clockwise sorry we need to change it on a clockwise because as you can figure it's laid on the uh, this nozzle so let's make it on clockwise and click on save now when you click start simply we should make the same information of this nozzle looks like the parent nozzle okay so here we have this stiffening grip for uh, this nozzle like that okay now uh, if we uh, if we measure this value as I can see we have uh, I think uh, we need to increase the outside diameter of of this nozzle because the rating of this flange is different so it's 8 4 okay so we need to change this by body to 8 4 here on this rib and that rib okay, 8 4 like that and click start Okay, after creating, uh, updating those strips, we will uh, proceed with the last course of nozzles. We have three nozzles here and another nozzle there. Okay, so let's come back here and select CAN3. And from elements, let's select N6 nozzle. It's a nozzle from pipe with 6 inches with a schedule 80. And uh, at the location 3, uh, 4, uh, 4430, the orientation at 0 degree, the material of the pipe, and here the uh, width of uh, width of the uh, rebad, the material of the rebad, and let's add a flange for this one. So from here, let's add flanges N6 flange. Okay, let's check here which is in six it's 150 the rating so from here select the type size and schedule and here's the material of the forged range click save okay and from here if we open the calculator to define the projection on the 500 and for the set build, 8 and 8. Okay. Uh, this nozzle without blind. Let's go to the next nozzle, which is nozzle M10. So let's select this one. So N, sorry, N10. It looks like N6. So from here, let's make it looks like N6. And let's add a flange to this one, which is N10 flange. Okay, it looks like N6 flange, but we will come back to N10 to change the uh, location of uh, this nozzle. So as you can figure, we have a different location for uh, this nozzle, so we need to change that one. Okay, keep uh, the information as it is. If we take a look to the N10 here, yes, it's the same rating, the same schedule, the same size, so everything is okay. So click on save 
Now let's add the uh, next uh, nozzle, which is in 11. Okay, this nozzle, it's a long wall neck nozzle. So let's take a look to the table here. Two inches, uh, long wall neck and uh, 300 as a rating. So from here, let's select the shell, can three. And from here, let's select in 11, uh, sorry. Uh, we, we already created here, it's in 11. So let's select a uh, long wall neck nozzle, the rating, the size, and uh, from here, uh, select the uh, location, define the location, the orientation, the material of, sorry, the material for the forging material, and uh, click on save, and from the calculator, define the projection. Okay, so the value will be changed here in the fillet weld. Now uh, let's add a stiffening grip for uh, nozzle N11. So from here, let's add stiffening grip in 11 grips. Okay, so from here, the outside diameter, the width, uh, thickness, contact angle. It's uh, 20 and the location, the, the same location of nozzle N11, the orientation, the material is a normalized material, rib offset 70 millimeters, the same projection of the nozzle. So let's come back to nozzle, nozzle N11 and take a copy from the projection and come back here, paste uh, this value. And let's uh, add uh, a stiffening grip here, stiffening grip number three and the rib angle 30 millimeters and the offset 70 millimeters click save now let's generate n6 nozzle with the flange after that n10 Now nozzle in 11 and uh, the ribs of this nozzle, stiffening ribs for this nozzle. Okay, here we have stiffening ribs for this nozzle. Now we have one more uh, nozzle at the bottom, which is in 4. So let's select can 3 and from elements, let's add in 4. Okay, nozzle N4 is a nozzle from pipe with six inches diameter with the schedule 80 and the location of this nozzle 1430. The orientation at the bottom, so it's 180 degrees and the material of this one is the pipe material with 85 normalized material for this one. Click save, okay. And for the projection, as mentioned before, we need to import the flange to calculate the correct projection for the nozzle from the facing of, of the flange. So select this one, select the suitable type, select the rating. So let's select, check the rating first. It's for nozzle N4. So nozzle N4 with a rating uh, 300. So let's select 300. Select the size and the schedule is 80. And the material of, of the forged. So from here, let's paste the material and click save. Now, if we come back to nozzle N4, in that case, we can define the projection in a correct way. So it's automatically reflected here. Define the fit world. And now let's click on simply. Okay, but the projection, uh, I think uh, at the bottom it's uh, different. It's not 1,500, it's 1,000 and 
250. Okay, so we will come back to the projection here and change it to be like that. Click Save and now click Run to update the projection of the bottom nozzle. Okay, one more uh, thing here if we come back to the drawing. We have those nozzles with uh, blind and cover, which is nozzle N10 and N11. So uh, here uh, that's N10, so let's select the external connection and add a gasket, so N10 gasket. Okay, select the suitable type of gasket, select uh, the rating, so let's ch ch check the, uh, okay, it's uh, 150, so the uh, size of uh, nozzle N10 uh, is uh, six, 6 inches, and click on save. Now in, uh, let's add a cover, so from here let's add N10 cover. So the cover, select the raised face type, the size and flip it. And from here, let's select the material, copy the material here. Okay, and for nozzle 11, N11, let's add a gasket, N11 gasket. Okay. I think it's a 300 and Size is two inches. Let's add a cover in 11 cover. Okay, so from that one, we will select the rest face, select rating, size, and the material, and make this flanges flipped. Now let's click on start assembly to start creating the. Uh, the body flange and the gasket for uh, nozzles in 10 and in 11. Okay, sorry, it's a sh it should be two inches. So let's come back here, uh, select two inches instead of three, click save. Now let's start the simply to update the body flange, the cover flange, sorry. Here we have the 3D model of uh, the uh, equipment. Uh, just we need to, to make uh, some uh, uh, more uh, uh, modifications for uh, the ring cut here. The cut on the ring. Add a vortex breaker there. Okay, and uh, adding uh, stud bolts and left. Okay. And uh, some internals uh, here on, on this uh, nozzle. Okay, uh, let's start with uh, adding uh, a vortex breaker, or before vortex breaker, let's uh, do a cut for nozzles. Here, if you take a section on the visit at uh, as the half here, you can figure that no cut for on the shell. Here you have a complete shell, no cut for for nozzles. So if you would like to make a cut for nozzles by here, let's uh, make it by using a tool uh, in SEG software. So uh, before proceeding with that, you can figure that we, we, we make the complete 3D model for this equipment in, I think, one hour, maybe less than one hour. Uh, and uh, we will make some uh, customization here. Uh, let's load the nozzles from the nozzle load and define the clearance of the cut and make the equal clearance here by selecting this button. So the whole of the cut will be greater than the outside diameter of uh, the uh, uh, nozzle with two millimeters. And from here, let's uh, create the cut and you will uh, figure that uh, SEG will create a cut on the elements automatically here. The first shell course, we, we, uh, SEG detect the nozzle and create a cut for this nozzle and for the second uh, nozzle at the bottom. On the second shell, SEG detect the nozzles and will create the uh, nozzle cut. Okay, for each nozzle. So SEG will help you to make that automatically. If you would like to get a uh, sheet metal development or shell development for uh, this part you can get it 
uh, easily uh, by using uh, this tool to generate uh, the nozzle holing uh, uh, on the uh, shell plates. If you would like to get the shell development, and I will show you how you will how you can uh, make that. Uh, there is a tool uh, on SEG software to detect all sheet plates uh, on your project and uh, get the sheet metal development for it. And if you would like to uh, select to uh, uh, define it element like a shell uh, blade to get a shell development for it, you can do that uh, easily. Here, after uh, finishing the shell development, it collapse all childs and Save the assembly. If you open this shell blade, for example, you can figure that you have a cut for nozzles. So if you would like to get shell development, you can get it directly like that. Okay. And you can figure that this is the welding line, that that welding line on 55 uh, degrees, I think, or uh, 305 uh, degrees. Okay. So uh, let's come back to SCG and close this window. And let's close this part. If you open this shell course, and if you would like to get the sheet metal development, you will get it like that. And the welding line here on 55 degrees. Okay, now let's uh, create a vortex breaker on, on uh, this uh, shell. So let's select CAM3 and from element select and uh, group of internal attachments. If you uh, take a look to the elements here, you can add uh, impingement baffle deflector bundle retainer but we need to add a vortex breaker so from here let's add vortex breaker for n4 so uh, you will find uh, different types of, of uh, vortex uh, breakers like like that okay and in, in our case uh, let's select the uh, type uh, 2 Okay, that type. Okay, and uh, let's uh, define the, the size of uh, the nozzle, which is nozzle uh, suits the nozzle in the four. It's four six inches uh, nozzle with uh, schedule eighty. Okay, and the uh, thickness of of the blade will be ten millimeters. The location will be the same uh, location of the nozzle, one thousand hundred and thirty. The orientation one hundred and uh, 90 degree the material of this one so if you would like to make it user defined you can change the value from here so the uh, depth which is uh, as i mentioned you can define it from here if you would like to add a circular plate or a circular add a perpendicular plate and define the material and click on save now if you click start the assembly Here's that the vortex breaker. Okay. So let's take a section here. Okay, that's the vortex breaker here, like that. Okay, but if you take a look to the drawing here, you can figure that this vortex breaker from uh, three uh, from three fins only, not four. So uh, the three fins it's not uh, included type in SCG, and you can create it manually and import it uh, to the three D model uh, if you would like to make something like that. And uh, as as mentioned in, in our uh, tutorial videos, we 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 offering uh, creating uh, any special item uh, for for free. Uh, so if you would like to uh, inform us about uh, the required uh, items, if you would like to add a special spec or a special part, uh, our technical uh, team can do it and include it in SEG uh, library. Now let's uh, let's add uh, the uh, stud bolts for the body flanges uh, and add uh, manhole david and the other attachments. Okay, now let's come back to SCG and from here for the manhole we have a cover here. So on this cover we would like to add a stud bolt. So if we 
uh, open up the uh, Trubay catalog and take a look to the uh, size uh, 24 inches nozzle. We could use for the rest face nozzle uh, the a bolt with uh, one and a quarter uh, UNC and with a length 175. So let's add stud bolts. Image stud. Let's select UNC and from here 1.25 and uh, for the materials of of uh, that's the material of the bolt. Okay, and the material of it's 2M. Okay, the total length will be like that, and the not spacing, which is the spacing between the two knots. So we we will need to measure the distance from here to there. Take that value, so copy, and click on save. Now we will create a stud on the uh, on this um, uh, cover flange. Here we have the uh, stud bolts for uh, this connection. And if you would like to add a hand grip, so from elements, let's add hand grip, MH grip. Okay, uh, you, you have a different types of, of grips. You can select the suitable type. We, we can uh, select this one. Keep those uh, values as they are and uh, defined. Uh, we have two hand grips. And finally, let's add uh, David. We have two general two types of the manway damage the first time as a one part so no details inside this part so if you would like to include it on the 3d model as a one part you can use manway david so mh david okay and from here you can select the suitable type for your case Okay, so in our case, we could select uh, that type, which is type C, define the pipe outside diameter and the orientation. Let's make it on 90 degree right now and click simply. Okay, those are the hand grips. And here the uh, top David, sorry, that's the top David. You can change the orientation of, of this one. So let's change the orientation and make it at zero degree. Click on start. Okay, so here we have this uh, top David. And if you would like to include a detailed Manhole David. Let's uh, select the blind flange and from here let's add detailed David. Okay. And from here you can figure that uh, you have the ability to select from uh, some standards uh, uh, listed here. Like that standard, for example, you can select uh, the type for. Uh, of the uh, manhole so you can select uh, the type and define the dimensions of the manhole and in this case you will get all items of this uh, manhole listed on the bill of material okay so you have a, a list for each item of this uh, manhole david on the bill of material okay so let's take this one and let's add another uh, stud bolts to the other flanges we have in seven okay so let's select uh, in the seven here it's two inches so in seven stud. 
Okay, so if we open the trouvé, so two inches, we have five by five by eight, and the length is eighty-five. So eighty-five, and the material here is two uh, hm. Okay, for knots and four bolts. P7M, okay, and let's measure the knot spacing. So from here, we will need to measure the knot spacing, okay, and take this value as a copy and click on save. Now we have another nozzle, which is nozzle this one, which is nozzle N10, okay. So N10, if we come back here to the list. N10 is 6 inches, so if we open the trouvé, the 6 inches is uh, 3 by 4 with 100 millimeters length. So let's add N10 stud. And 3 by 4, the material of, sorry, sorry, here that's the material of the bolt, the material of knot, the first knot and the second knot, the lens, and from here we can measure the spacing. Let's copy this value, put it here, and click on save. Now for nozzle uh, in 11 cover, let's add 11 stud. It's a two inches with a rating is 300. So let's open the true way. So it's two inches with 300. So five by eight with uh, 19 millimeters. So five by eight. Okay. And it's 90, the material of the knot. And here's the material of the bolt. And the knot spacing, let's measure it from here, from here to there. Copy this value and paste it here. Click on save and let's close this form. One more option we could make it here, which is on the setting, which is auto zooming. Here, if you select to normal, so no zoom extend will take place after modification. So the view will be uh, the same. Here, if you click on start simply and take a look here. So the view will not change after importing this item. On the default option, uh, after importing uh, any item, uh, uh, Autodesk Inventor will make a zoom extend. But in this case, it will keep the view as it is. So now I will move the view to the second nozzle. Okay, now we uh, create the stud bolts for all, for all the model. Now we need to make a cut on the uh, whip of the stiffening ring. And now we will learn how to uh, make, make that. Okay, uh, now let's uh, go to the, uh, the level of the uh, part from the... Uh, the simply model from here let's go to the level of the uh, this uh, stiffening rib and from here let's uh, create a sketch okay by, by uh, after uh, double clicking on this one let's create a sketch here and project the uh, wheel plate of uh, of the saddle here and the outside uh, uh, the outside uh, 
uh, lines of, of uh, the cell. Now, after finishing, we can open this part separately after uh, creating those uh, lines. And let's change the uh, properties of this one and make color as blue to be able to see it. And let's make it like that. Now we have this cut on uh, the saddle. If you get the arc option and create an arc from here to there, the same from here to a certain point here, let's make a construction line to help us to make a mirror. Okay, so let's select this one, that one, and that one, and let's make a mirror around this line. Okay, so from here, we can make line like that. Make that one as a construction line. So now we have the end point of, of this one. If you would like to increase the cut from here to there, you can do that. But right now we will make it the same. So if we make a cut here, make a cut on the two sides, click OK. Now we make a cut on the uh, web by that way. So here you can figure that we make a cut here. And we need to make one more cut on the outside ring of, uh, of this uh, outer stiffening ring. But the, uh, the rib itself, we get this cut. And if you would like to make a modification, like make uh, a notch or something like that, you can do it easily on the sketch uh, itself. For example, if you would like to increase uh, this cut a little bit, so you can increase the arc lens from here to there okay and add another uh, closed area and you can make a cut for it now let's make a cut on the uh, outside ring so let's select the outside ring and from the sketch let's select uh, the plane x y plane and let's project the outside lines from here to there and let's click finish and let's open this part separately. So from here, let's open the second part. Go to this sketch. Let's change the color from yellow to blue. And from here, let's close this area. Now we have this closed area. So we can make an extrude cut hole through hole. And let's click Save. Now, if you take a look to the 3D model here, you will get a cut for the stiffening ring on the saddle by that way. Okay, uh, Alhamdulillah, we uh, finish uh, the 3D model of, of this equipment. One more thing we will need uh, to do, which is the uh, uh, internal uh, support for, for uh, this uh, nozzle and we will discuss on the uh, next tutorial inshallah how to make those and how to prepare for our drawings how to make our own title block and border and how to import those uh, views to the drawing including the blue material and uh, the other tables before finishing this uh, session uh, we, we, I would like to uh, give a hint about the uh, tables here. If you open the bill of material table, you will find a complete and a detailed bill of material for, uh, sorry, for your uh, equipment. Here, that's a list of items. You have 65 uh, different items. The total number of items is uh, 211. Uh, here I have a description for each item and the technical characteristics for each item and the material for each item, the weight and the total weight for uh, the equipment. Okay, so you, you will get this detailed bill of material for your equipment. You can export it in Excel format. So from here, for example, if you would like to export it, let's select the desktop and uh, create uh, the BOM uh, of today. Let's 
like that. Now if we close this one and go back to the desktop, sorry, here if you, that's the export bill of material. If you open it, you will get a detailed bill of material and you can figure that you have a part number, uh, sorry, uh, the uh, part name list to indicate you where this item uh, referred the reference of this item you have ellipsoidal head it's for the right head and left head for example for this flange here you have four flanges with the same uh, description and the technical characteristics here if you take a look it's for uh, n9 flange n2 flange n2 flange 2 and n2 uh, flange so you have those four identical flanges uh, for the same Item. SCG make uh, uh, the listing depends on the uh, identical items. They should have the same description, same technical characteristics, same material, and the same weight. So SCG will detect that they are identical items and will sum them and give them the same uh, item number. Okay. Uh, now let's. Uh, Take a look to another table, which is the uh, nozzle table. Here you will find a list of four nozzles in our model. Here, the nozzle tag, the nozzle service as defined, the nozzle outside diameter, the nozzle orientation, nozzle thickness, nozzle scribble. Okay, the nozzle flange class, so that's the rating of the flange. The type of the flange, it's uh, weld neck or long weld neck. The facing, if it's uh, RTJ or rest face or flat face. If you have a blind, you will find here on that table the blind class uh, and blind uh, facing. The internal projection and external projection, the bad thickness, uh, rebad width, and the weld style for the uh, nozzles. Okay, uh, here another uh, table for the material list. Here you will get a list for uh, the head material. So that's the material of, of the head and the seamless pipe that's the material of the uh, seamless pipe and shell support blades and lifting lugs material nozzle neck material and flange cover gasket material nut material and uh, uh, hand grip material so different uh, the list of different materials you you will you can get it from here another table for nozzle orientation so here that's the table of uh, nozzle uh, orientation okay i hope that uh, session uh, covers uh, some important uh, more important points regarding uh, 3d modeling and uh, as you can see in uh, uh, maybe one and a half hour we create the 3d model for uh, this equipment including uh, a detailed uh, description for each uh, item and inshallah during the uh, next uh, tutorial video we will discuss how to create the general arrangement drawing and the detailed drawings for uh, this equipment uh, thank you so much for your uh, valuable time and if you have uh, any questions kindly uh, 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 write it in a comment uh, and you can contact us in uh, contact uh, at secatsolutions.com or, -E uh, or secatsolutions at gmail.com. Thank you so much. Have a nice day. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.